Arthur Calder Marshall was a British novelist and biographer. Born in 1908 in Wannington, Surrey, the son of Arthur Grotin Marshall and Alice Poole. Educated at Oxford, he taught at Denstone College, Staffordshire, between 1931 and 1933. At that time, he joined the Communist Party of Great Britain. In 1934, he married documentary screenplay writer Violet Nancy Sales, known as Ada, the pair having two daughters, among them the actress Anna Calder Marshall. In 1937, he was hired to write movie scripts for MGM, though none are known to have been filmed. In 1941, Orson Welles wished to adapt his The Way to Santiago, but issues with Archeo Pictures prevented the film from being made. He died in 1992. He wrote on a variety of subjects, from travel books, children's fiction, novels and biographies, as well as novelizations of films in the 1960s under the name William Drummond. One of his most well-known works is The Fair to Middling, a story of a group of children with disabilities offered a devil's bargain at a fair that suddenly shows up in their village. Today we will review his final novel, The Scarlet Boy, which was released in 1961. And right off the bat the blurb which says the book is a disturbing adult novel of an innocent encounter with an earthly evil is mostly false advertising. You see, Charles Scarlet barely appears in the first half of the book at all. In fact, he's mentioned on about five pages. The rest is devoted into delving into the Scarlet family history, with a lot of melodrama in the mix. Now, while this is interesting per se, I really don't see why it needed to be laid out so thick in the beginning, as it turns the title character into a rather forgettable presence. The story takes place in Britain in 1959, and has the narrator, George Grantley recount his history of the whole affair in somewhat excessive detail. The narrator is contacted by an old friend, Kit Everness, who wants help in finding a house. He then comes across the house owned by the Scarlets, a family he knows fairly well due to his adoration of the aunt, but who have let their house go to rot. Said aunt died years ago, and the narrator soon discovers from old letters she wasn't such a saintly soul as he thought she was. Some time into negotiations, he's informed the house is said to be haunted, the narrator, in 1959, accepts the whole haunting idea as a tangible and very possible threat to his friend and family. Immediately and without question. You see, in most haunted house stories, after we hear the phrase is said to be haunted, there's at least some sort of a story or other associated with the place. Some dark omens, mysterious disappearances and what have you. However, here the author is generous enough to skip all that nonsense and has his narrator accept the rumour of the ghost being true without even hearing it and without even showing us anything remotely wrong with the place. Oh, by the by, the back cover also says this book is on equal terms with the turn of the screw. But finally, over 40 pages into the book, we find out something disquieting about Charles Scarlet, specifically about his strange sadomasochistic games as a child. Meanwhile, the cast of characters is expanded by the arrival of Kit Evanis, his wife and his daughter, who can see ghosts apparently, as she draws a picture of Greatly's dead mother, except he doesn't recognise who it's supposed to be. Arriving with them is also Evanessa's Hungarian cook Magda, and of course the overweight middle-aged balding narrator falls in love with the Hungarian cook and surprisingly finds his effort not wasted. The narrator proceeds to secure the house via double-crossing the sister of the current owner, who really wants the house for herself. Just before the arrival of his pesky, womanizing, uncouth, uncivilized, and overly bad mannered and incompetent Aussie cousin Harry, who, besides being a mix of various Australian stereotypes, adds little if anything to the story. Then finally, we have some ghostly manifestation take place in the form of a chill. And we're finally told about the queer series of events leading up to Charles Scarlet hanging himself as a child. In the meanwhile, the narrator has little to do but try to convert people to Anglicanism. And when we finally have Kit Evanessa's daughter possessed by a malignant spirit, I can say I was all but ready to give up on waiting for the unearthly evil promised on the front cover. The child is tempted to kill herself like Charles before, and possibly myriads of other children since time immemorial, a very strong image I must admit, but in the end she's rescued by the narrator calling out, in the name of Jesus Christ let it be gone, and it works despite him not being a priest, and it's also a really underwhelming way to get rid of the one supernatural occurrence in the novel. When it is over, the narrator manages to do two things, convert Kit and his atheistic leftist wife to Anglican Christianity, and hold a sacrament in their home, and if you think a chapter called The Heretical Sacrament would have anything uncanny happening, then you weren't paying much attention.